Welcome. It is the Ski Bum Podcast, and it is your pals, Mario and Brian. Mario, what's up? Getting ready, starting, a, the, the mind is going 100 miles an hour thinking about the Snowbound Expo. Yeah, very exciting stuff happening. We actually have Ski Resorts, the official first North American resort, has opened up. Not what you expect. Right. Unless you are where it opened and you already know. And like Mario said, we're going to talk about on our main topic, the Snowbound Expo. We've been talking about our involvement the last couple of weeks. Give you guys some more info, let you know what we're doing. We're super psyched. We hope you can make it if you're in the Boston area. As, as long as you're within 10 hours of driving, you should come and check it out. It's what they say they sold about 18,000 tickets already. A lot of tickets. Yep. A lot of tickets. And that was people, are, stuff. people yeah. are getting fired up. People are, are sick of COVID and lockdowns and not getting out and doing ski related stuff with awesome ski people. So it is going to be year. on. It's going to be super fun. Thank you so much for listening. Check us out, skibumpodcast.com. Check us out on the socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Untapped, YouTube, at Ski Bum Podcast. Go to your favorite podcasting apps, rate and subscribe, and send us an email, skibumpodcast at gmail.com. Big shout out and thank you to The Chuck Bucket. This episode is brought to you by The Chuck Bucket, a brand new ski rack from a startup in Salt Lake City, Utah. Is a trailer hitch rack that's designed to hold eight pairs of skis or four plus snowboards. Simple to load for the whole family and is easy for anyone to install and uninstall from the hitch. Check it out at thechuckbucket.com. You should chuck and, it in the bucket. And for anyone who likes to shred in the off season, they also launched, launched a bike rack that works with their modular ski rack system. You got your main stem, you take off the bucket part, you attach the bike rack. Allows four bikes to be held vertically on the back. It's super cool. You can pre order that at the chuckbucket.com. Four seasons of Chuck Bucketry. Thank you for sponsoring us. Check them out at the chuckbucket.com. Mario, let's kick it off where we always do. It's time for our prey today. Today's our prey is. I think this is a re- repeat for me from last week. So it's another. I'm still trying to finish the uh, the pack that I got. The uh, Oktoberfest Marzen from Three Daughters. Actually, I don't okay. think I drank that. Um, that is what um, you had. Yep, is what I had. But this time I have it in my nice Reitzenhof glass. There you go. The Oktoberfest Boy and Girl. Mister Fancy here. So I love these glasses. If you drink beer or wine, they have wine glasses. They have shot glasses. They have them all. Um, I wish we got sponsored by them. Those little fuckers should give us some, some love. Um, High quality merchandise. Yes. Yes. Very good. I actually snuck them back from Germany in my anus. Keistered. <laughs> Keistered. Why you appreciate them so much. Yeah, exactly. You know what I had to go through for that? Um, and in fact, they didn't break. That's pretty impressive. It is pretty impressive. And they're pretty big glasses, you know. So they're very big glasses. Well, I you're gotta very, say, you know, very accommodating, apparently. <laughs> you gotta start with the shot glass and then work up to the big glass, you know. It's true. You don't want to be you don't want to just go right to the um Das Boot on your first attempt. It's gonna be a rough long. Oh, he tried to rough, put long the whole flight. Das Boot in there. The whole right? boot. Yeah. Booting his ass. I'm booting the boot. Oh. Yeah, but this margin's pretty good. I, I actually um I was thinking about drinking beer tonight and I was I was gonna open up one of a few different ones and i was like you know what this one hit the spot it's a it's a little lighter drinking it's 5.25 abv so it's not too bad i mean it's a, it's a school night yeah so it is a school night i gotta just kind of you know slow my roll and keep it in check it's tonight. very funny how depending on what day we record the podcast what sort of libations we end up going with so now oh, last we to, weekend we yeah. did it last week we did it on friday yeah so all bets were off well, we used to do it on Fridays, right? It was like a lot of time. Well, like Thursday well, we was started off. Thursday always seemed to be the night that it ended up being, but we did a lot of Fridays for a while too. Yeah, I think when we first started, Thursday and Fridays were big. And my job at the time was like I had it organized where nothing important happened on Fridays. It was just like a catch up day, which is kind of what it should be. 
you know, yeah. have a few meetings and then just pound away at the rest of the work that you didn't finish for the week that you really got to get done. Now my job is just shit's hitting the fan every day. And I'm like, it's just Friday would probably be, you know, that's why last Friday was, was pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Wasn't off the chain though. We were pretty still reserved. I don't no, know. Well, it was also just a rapper too, which was nice. Cause we had that great interview with, with Andrew from trail weight. Yeah. That was a quality episode. If you didn't check out 290, I think it may be our <laughs> best one of the year from start to finish in terms of information, comedy, quality interview. It really had something for everybody. I got to say, the next day I woke up and, you know, it's kind of one of those things like we go, we go pretty late, we drink a little have other stuff and just kind of you go to sleep, you wake up and then you start kind of just going through in your head. Like, what do we talk about again? Because we kind of riff, like we don't plan on it. And then we just riff. So you try to remember like, Oh yeah, we did, talked about that. Talked about that. And then you start remembering and I'm like brushing my teeth and I just start laughing my ass off. Cause I remembered <laughs> what we started talking about with the Marlboro thing. And yeah. I was like, Holy crap. So I'm laughing. And my wife's la- asking like what, and I'm trying to, you know, crudely explain, You're like, you know, wait till what, Monday, you'll find <laughs> out. I'm like, you got to listen to it. And I just explained a little bit of it to her and she was laughing her ass while she's like, I got to listen to that. Yeah. It's pretty so, funny. It's also it was, on Instagram. With, I posted the uh, video <laughs> clips of it. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere, you know, everywhere you get the podcast. It was totally not politically correct, but Hey, you know what? Nobody listen. cares about smokers anyway. So why not? Right. <laughs> what is politically correct anymore? What are politics? What is correct? By who? Who determines what's correct? I mean, I care about smokers. I think we both care about smokers and people and everything. But comedy's comedy. I mean, that shit was just funny. I care about free will. And <laughs> if that person wants to smoke, then God bless them. They should smoke. If they don't want to, they should not smoke. That's what I think. Exactly. I think less, less people telling you what to do because they're getting paid off by people to tell you to or not to do things. I think that's better off for everybody. Exactly. That's my stand. So that that's a teaser. If you didn't listen to last week's podcast, it's, yet. it's so worth it. I'm, I was, when I edited, it was like doing the editing for the I podcast. I was crying. I was, I was crying. Dying. I, was laughing. <laughs> I was dying. Even listening to it again. I'm on the, I was actually on, where is I? I was actually, Oh, well, I was, I was cutting the clips for um, Instagram on the, the boat when I was commuting to work <laughs> and I was laughing, just listening to it. It was just, it was that funny. It was, it was magical it was good, it was good. unplanned magical it was, it was total it was magic and this is why we're hosting snowbound there you go not so, an accident that's what puts puts the asses in the seats right? <laughs> that's right <laughs> entertainment are you not entertained so my selection this week if if you went to six year ago me and told him <laughs> that i was drinking this he would not be happy with me. I don't know who I've become. Don't what tell I me am it's a anymore. Malort seltzer. Uh, yeah, right. A Malort and tonic. I wonder if that Malort is making seltzer. Can you imagine? They have to. Everyone is. Everyone's making a seltzer. I was actually excited about getting this because I don't know what I am anymore as a human being, as a man. But I got... But I, it's pretty good. And you know what? Actually, I do understand. You know, because I, I don't have time to be to drink and be hung over and not be ready to go at six in the morning to exactly. get stuff done because i will tell you after our podcast friday night i uh, my wife had gone out to community theater that night one of our neighbors wow. she was the star in the um the local uh they did uh bridges of madison county all right it was opening night my wife went with uh, our other neighbor and the first the podcast said, save you there. Thanks, podcast. The first thing I asked her, I was like, are you guys going to pregame before this? <laughs> She's like, no. I'm like, you're going to community theater s- sober? sober? Like, Sober? Why? Madison County. Bridges in Madison sell, County. They don't sell booze. Apparently, it was pretty hot and heavy. I've never seen it. I don't know anything about it. But she yeah. said it was pretty Said it was pretty hot and heavy. And hot and heavy if you were hammered, too. I'm just saying. I, she, they went sober to community theater. God bless them. Hey, we're going to Boston. It's called Wicked Hammered up there. Wicked Hammered. <laughs> so afterwards, you know, we were talking, and I think I made a more drink after it, but this is how I woke up Saturday morning. 
we had a uh, you know we've had some like pretty cool neighbors and one of my son's little classmates she dropped off something at our front door while I was getting them ready for bed that night and it was a little you know a little Halloween thing wrapped in you know cellophane oh sweet yes sweet but at six fifteen in the morning on a Saturday when you're being woken up going daddy what's this <laughs> Cellophane <laughs> crinkling at six fifteen in the morning is like being next to Cape Canaveral for a rocket launch. You have no idea how loud it is. But after that podcast, it could have been the wrapper, the plastic wrapper of a carton of cigarettes. So you have to wake up, right? Could have been. But see, that's the thing. Like, I can't be wake. I can't. I can't have like three or four drinks and be like <laughs> hungover and not able to get up. I got to be ready to go as soon as those, you know, yeah. those little whip crackers wake up. So this is what I have become. I uh, I heard about this beer. I had to try it. It is the Athletic Brewing Company. Oh yeah. Technically, it's a non-alcoholic brew. It is less than half a percent. I got their Free Wave Hazy IPA, hmm. and I gotta tell you, it's actually pretty good. I mean, you know, it smells very citrusy, just like it was. So it's not no alcohol, right? Yeah. So is it really good? No, it's not really good. It's like okay. It's okay. It's missing it's okay. the alcohol. It's missing, you know. You know, like when you first start hugging girls in like middle, like late late middle school, like almost high school, and you just a girl you really like, and you don't understand sex and emotions and anything yet, and you get that hug. And you like this, and you like this girl, and she gives you that hug, and you know that she does not like you. Mm. That's what this beer reminds me of. Oh. It's like it's like that hug that you think is going to be awesome and great and affirming and full of 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 life, and it just comes up. So it makes empty. you feel like the creepy uncle at Christmas, right? <laughs> not really like that at all. It just makes you feel like like. Uh, you, people like right before they become goth in high school, you know, oh. they're like the world is nothing, man. There's nothing this. They start quoting, you know, freaking who's the guy who talks about nothingness? It's not Nietzsche, know. is it? I don't know. One of those like nihilist, <laughs> one of those nihilist type people. Wasn't Dan Egan? That's all I know. Wasn't Dan Egan? That's for sure. <laughs> so, I will tell you, when you smell it, it smells really good. And then you drink it, and you're like, am I drinking funky, unsweetened tonic water, or is this really beer? So so that's made to mix with vodka, right? I don't know. It's made for – I don't know what it's for. You mix it with vodka or drink it straight, whatever I you could, want to do. I could see – say might as well have a ginger beer. It's not a real beer. Yeah. It's just ginger flavored. There's so much soda. sugar. There's so much sugar in ginger beer. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But it's meant to mix with another alcohol. But you know what? I could see drinking a couple of these on the beach. That These would work in that regard. If you finna go swimming and you want to make sure people aren't dying in the water. How many this, calories are in that bad boy? Like 60 maybe. Yeah, so you're still splitting hairs. It's still, you get a light beer. It's like, what, 95? Maybe 70 100? calories. Yeah. 70 calories. So I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, I respect that it exists. I mean, am I, I get gonna... that some people, you know, have to stay away or, or don't want the alcohol. I respect that. But a lot of times when you're drinking a beer, it's kind of a slippery slope. Like there's times where you really do want the taste of a beer. But then there's a lot of other times you're just like, you have to I want to get lawn. a little tipsy. After yeah. mowing the lawn, you know, you want a taste of a beer. Something yeah. about grass clippings and ragweed just goes well with beer. Yeah. I don't know what this, I, I, I don't know. But also sometimes you drink it, you're like, I want to get a little buzz, you know? So it's kind of recreational. and You know, when I had these the first time is we had a family party, my sister or my daughter's birthday. So I'd have like a real drink or two and then have one of these. Mm, so it yeah, kind of like mellows you out. You got to slow roll at some point. Yeah, this this helps with that. Dude, that's what milk ultra is for me. It's like the other water. You have yeah. that, it kind of cools you out, sobers you up. Yeah. Yeah, but it kind of like keeps, crushing double keeps IPAs keeps all day. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hot summer day, double IPAs. That's a rough one. Right at the beach, playing volleyball all day at the beach. Just crack open a nice double IPA. <laughs> no bueno, man. No bueno. No bueno. 
But yeah, they're good. I mean, again, I uh, I can find a purpose for them, but it would not be my first choice. First choice stretch. I've seen their ads, and I'm still trying to figure out like, is it how they come off? Is it smug, pretentious? Is it kind of just chill? Like, I'm just kind of figure out like, I don't know what vibe it's giving. You know, it's definitely got a little bit of a. I'm better than you because I'm drinking that, non-alcoholic beer versus, you know, that's what I'm saying. You getting your, you know, whatever standard normal fatty beer. It's like if Mad Dog 2020 was at an event, they wouldn't even be there because of like, oh, Mad Dog's there. I can't even be there. Like, I want a beer that goes in, like says, I don't care who's there. I'm just going to go in. Like you definitely, that's could, this is like, this is like a, the official beer of Peloton owners. Exactly. And I have a felt on right back there. I actually there you wrote go. it yesterday for the first time in like a month. Yeah, you could definitely like, two like months. they should definitely have like an athletic brew Peloton edition bike. That would make sense. That would be very in brand. So you should just get on the Peloton with that beer and just drink that instead of water. Well, this is where it right. comes in. I think this the, this beer Ipso is, facto, it's the same as water. I think this actually works great for driving. Because if you're oh. say you went somewhere, say you went for a bike ride. Or you went for a hike, or I don't know, choose whatever sporting activity in the summer you you enjoy. You walk into an operating room, pound in one of those, right? Have a couple of these in the car. <laughs> that should be fine, right? Yeah, right. We are not attorneys or law enforcement, so maybe check your local jurisdictions jurisdictions for the of said activity. But I think you probably could. Oh yeah, Who's there's no alcohol. You? Well, there's that commercial they have for I think it's the Heineken Zero when that came out, and the guy's sitting in his car and he's drinking one of these Heinekens, mm -hmm. and it looks like a regular Heineken beer. And the cop comes up to him, and he's like, points to the thing, all smug, like, yeah, zero calorie, you know, zero, you know, there's there's no alcohol. And the guy, you know, cop points at him, is like, it's a no parking zone, dickhead. I'm still gonna write you a ticket, you right. know, so. Like you want to be smug because you're drinking a zero alcohol beer, great, but you, you still could be a, doing something stupid. So speaking of something like that, I saw somebody post a, uh, a funny meme online. They were like, "I'm gonna bake a bunch of cookies that look like iPhones, so that when I'm in the car, I'm gonna have my iPhone cookie in my hand. So if a cop pulls me over for being on my phone while I'm driving, I'm gonna be like, "Hey, sir, is it illegal to have cookies in your car while you're driving?" And just take a bite out of the cookie. Wow. That's a lot of setup for a joke that nobody else is going to get, though. Like, I well, get it, but you got to have a videographer, like, documenting the pullover and the cookie and, like, maybe a laugh track. There's a there's a lot in there. You're not there's Larry David. Involved. If you're there's Larry David, involved. you could pull it off. Yeah. You know? The black and white show. iPhone cookie. <laughs> black and white. Right? That, right? that would work. Mm -hmm. So... I'm drinking this thing. I don't know. It's a Wednesday I'm trying to survive. I got a I'm fun, I actually have a fun Saturday night plan, which I haven't had. in I think years, what are you doing? Cause well, it's not, it's, it's to anyone who doesn't have kids. It's not exciting at all, but someone who has kids and gets to get away for a day. It's exciting to me. My sister-in-law lives in new Haven, Connecticut temporarily for a job. All right. So we are dumping the kids at my mother-in-law's and we're going to New Haven. Oh. And we're going to go pizza. Up by hunting. Yale. That's Yale country if anybody knows. Yeah, know. that's where all the that's where the pizza is. That's the pizza capital of the world. Yeah. So we're going to get some that's good pizza. That's not where I went. I was near there, but I was like, yeah, the hockey tournament. It was a Yale tournament, but it wasn't there. We went to Papa Somewhere. John's instead and we're fine. Yeah. It's I funny. Found it's a one nice of those... Italian place up there. I mean, people who aren't like into pizza don't really realize like what a mecca that place is because you just usually if you're on 95, you just kind of blow right through. You're like, ugh. I mean, yeah, Yale's there, but it's pretty kind of not the best city. Unless you're going to Yale, you're not going to Yale. Let's put it that way. This this <laughs> is true. Skull and bones, baby. Eat the cracker. That's, that's right. That's right. There is like some of the best pizza in the world is from New Haven, Connecticut. It's crazy. Hmm. If you're into that thin, coal oven pizza, which nice, my jam. So we're going to go and actually on Saturday night have like an adult night, which is going to be awesome. Awesome. So, again, Dude, I got pig jig on Saturday. Pig jig? Pig jig. So I went last year and it was, uh, shit, who was it? It was Brett Young was the headliner. And there's just like an all day, like just, it was kind of country, but pop festival, music festival. 
but the whole basis of it, it's an entire um, pulled pork and pig picking just like competition. It's like a, you know, a barbecue competition. Ooh, so nice. that's really why it started. And then they started inviting bands and then they've been doing it for like, I think this is year 11 or 12. So they get these good bands in there and now it's like a concert, but the big feature is still this freaking barbecue thing. And you walk around, just eat barbecue and they give it out free. Like, yeah, vote for us kind of thing. So that sounds pretty awesome. Doing that all day. Going to eat my, my weight in, in barbecued pork and beef and whoever, whatever they barbecue. It's going to eat it. We're basically telling the folks at Snowbound, they may need to reinforce the stage for us because of pizza and barbecue. (laughs) I may be a, a more statuesque Mario when I show up there. <laughs> Rubenesque, if you will. <laughs> Rubenesque. <laughs> I love that word. People are like, what the fuck does that mean, Rubenesque? What, what if my name's Ruben? What are, you, like, what are you trying to like, say? It's like indubitably. Just throw that word around every once in a while. People are like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. But you got to do the hand roll. Indubitably. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. So Rubenesque. that's what we're doing. Maybe we'll find a brewery. Actually, Cherubish, I, it, for right? me, Cherubish like, with the little rosy cheeks. Little yeah. Fat little baby Cheruby. man. Cheruby. Yeah. I, uh, I I started to imbibe in a couple of Manhattans last week, and uh, I think that's going to be yeah. my, my drink of choice this what weekend. The, what are we going to drink in Boston? Can't drink a Manhattan in Boston. They're like, what are you drinking up there, you bunch of <laughs> bastards? Well, they have Manhattan clam chowder. They have New England <laughs> clam chowder. Don't they have a drink called the New England? If you order Manhattan clam chowder in Boston, is that a fight right there? I think I just start throwing down. Just yep. gonna... You're done. You're done. You're you get done. Whooped. You get get out of here, you bastard. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how my Jet jersey is going to go over on fucking Snowbound Saturday, Sunday mm-hmm. when Jet and Patriots are playing. We'll see. You know what you should do? You should get a Jets jersey made that says Brady 12. Uh, and they'll be like, <laughs> they'll be like, well, I have a Bucks oh. jersey. I don't have a. I, I specifically cannot wear a Tom Brady jersey. So I have a Bucks jersey. Now, what I like about the Bucks, though, Bucks fans, and I guess that have been Patriots fans, they have, he's wearing 12. So they have the jersey that's like half and half, half Bucks and half Patriots. Um, Patriots. And it's kind of cool. I'm like, yeah, I respect you for, for getting one of those. Um, but I like the ones that people make. Where they get two jerseys, cut them in half. They're like, oh, look, I got two jerseys, just the same. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> but a lot of work. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I mean, we probably got to keep it pretty chill while we're hosting. But I yeah. uh, I, I don't want to get, you know, stoned on stage. Dude, I'm going to be so jacked up on coffee. Like, that's my job. Like, that's my goal for the, uh, the times we're on stage. Lots of coffee. Red Bull's not going to be there, I don't think, because the year we were there and Red Bull was there, they kept giving us Cameron Red Nas Bulls. Day, man. We go Cameron to interview Nas. Cameron Nas, and we had like three Red Bulls. I'm like, Dude, it was I great. Was, that interview, I was so <laughs> jacked up. I was I had, seeing shit that day. <laughs> I had a giant Starbucks and then a Red Bull, and I was so jacked up. But it's funny. You're looking at me like, I can't drink Red Bull this early. I'm like, I don't know. They're like, we got this new flavor. Let's, and then you're like, they kind of talked us into it, and that was it. Then we're drinking Red Bulls, and then we're like, hey, let's get another one. They have a yeah. different flavor. They're like, do you want to try purple? It's like, ooh, I want to try purple. <laughs> I want to try purple because once you get that taste, you're like, I got some more Red Bull. Yeah, and they had the um, that was it, pineapple, the yellow one. That was really good. The yellow. I like how like, like Red Bull just names them. Red, yellow, we'll call you color, green, <laughs> not flavor. It's just yellow. Just yellow. What flavor is it? It's yellow. Yeah. But, but what flavor is it? Yellow. That's Dude, what yellow Red tastes Bull, like. I mean, they made it work. Look yeah. at them. They freaking sponsor race cars and people crash jumping. ice. Crash they ice. started crashed ice, man. Yeah. Is it still going on? Oh, the cars racing on the on the mountain are great. They also have like a Formula One team. Like that's how crazy. Red Bull has become. They're magical. I can't they have like it. a uh, a squirrel suit team. Like they have everything. Everything ridiculous. Boat they have racing, ski movies. anything cool. Yeah. Sponsor it. Yeah. What are they calling crashed ice something else? Yeah, they're trying to call it. Uh, they're trying to make it like official so that it can be like an Olympic sport. They're ta- calling ice on, cross um, downhill. That's right. Ice cross, just like snow cross or whatever. Or yeah. Skate cross or ice cross. Yeah, being the Olympics someday will be like 
go back to the the archives of the high flute and ski bums and <laughs> hear the interview with Cameron Nas, the original champion of crashed ice when it was when it was just starting. Yep. We could be part of a documentary, docuseries. <laughs> Might be a small part, but we could be in there. We never but know. Still apart. Still apart. Still apart. I still think it's your calling. You can you can do it. You can make the team. Senior circuit. I'm in. Oh, Cameron was like, fuck that. You can get in there. Go for it. He's go. He's got he's got to win. <laughs> Not first <laughs> just, or last. Just win, baby. That's Be the right. Ricky Bobby <laughs> Ricky Bobby who crashed ice. Yeah. Of ice cross now. Let's go to ski news. As we teased in the beginning. North American ski season is officially open for business. Yeah. And it wasn't Wolf Creek. It wasn't a basin. It what? was good old wild mountain in Minnesota. Nice. Minnesota On, strong. That's right. October 18th matches their second earliest opening date in their history. They opened on October 18th, 1992. Their earliest opening date ever was October 7th in 2012. So he said, keep in mind, we've only had two nights of snowmaking, so our terrain will be extremely limited. We'll be open with the front stage trail service by the front stage rope tow. We'll have four to six terrain park features available as well. So they were open opening day from 12 to 7 and then 1 to 7 on the 19th. Tickets, wow. 25 bucks. And season passes are valid. Damn. Yeah. So congratulations to Wild Mountain. You were the first ones to open. You win the crown. Revel in your glory. That's pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. It's cool. To be the first of the season in your state, which usually is never like even in the discussion. That's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, day one in the books. They pulled it off, so congrats to Wild, and congrats to the people that are nearby there. It's able to get their turns in in mid-October. Love For it. only 25 bucks. It works. 25 bucks. What else are you doing in October? You're not even trick-or-treating yet. It's still too early. That's right. <laughs> you could try. I mean, people probably won't give you stuff. You could trick-or-treat on the mountain. How about that? Yep, ski or treat. <laughs> ski or treat. All right, next up, we have a foot of over a foot of snow dumped up in Michigan, and they're skiing. So, uh, October Powder Day, um, a winter storm jumped, dumped over a foot of snow on Mi- Michigan's Upper Peninsula on Sunday night, the most anywhere in North America so far this winter season. So, enough for eager skiers to get out and earn their turns. So, if anybody doesn't know what that means, that means walk your ass up to the elevation, then ski down. So the snow fell on the western half of the Upper Peninsula. The National Weather Service in, in, issued a winter storm warning beginning at 8 p.m. Sunday through 2 p.m. Monday. So nice little snow day, a little you know, getting ready for a snow day. Um, but according to, K, to NWS National Weather Service, the area of Keweenaw Peninsula down Houghton County west to Ironwood and east to Marquette, we'll see the most snow. Uh, with it being a key, uh, October, accumulations won't last for long, but the photos are enough to get us stoked for the upcoming powder days soon. Yeah, so they're showing. Yeah, there's a great video on, I forget what the name of the group is Skiers and Snowboarders of the Midwest Facebook group. It's a video. They're at Mount Zion Ski Hill. Yeah, Mount Zion official. Ski Hill. And it looks pretty glorious. I got to tell looks, you. Looks like an official powder day. I got to say, that's pretty sweet. That Upper Peninsula in Michigan, that is a, a super gnarly place. It, it's funny because they always talk about Mount Bohemia, which is way up there, which is supposed to be some of the best skiing in the Midwest. Hmm. But getting to it, that was like, it's like it's a it is a journey is it oh yeah i mean you look at it on the map i mean it's you're basically going a couple hours north of green bay let me see mount bohemia 
Bohemia, a part of there. Yeah, it's like way up there, like almost on the tip of the peninsula. Yeah, that's kind of. But it is supposed to be super gnarly and super fun skiing. Hmm. But you are way up there. I don't even know how you, what the best way to get there would be, where you'd have to fly into. And I see there's the city of Marquette. Now, is that like, that's not where the like Marquette University is, is it? I don't know. Isn't that like Indiana? I'm going to say yes, and people are going to write in and say, you're an idiot and you're ignorant. Northern yeah, Michigan yes. University is there. Oh, look at that. But That's yes, pretty so cool. Like, it's like in surrounded by water. Yeah, like I said, way up there. So if you're in Green Bay, if you were going from Lambeau Field, Frozen Tundra, Frozen after Tundra. after losing to the Jets, boom! The, I had to say it. Or the Giants. Or the Giants. The back to back, right? Back to back. <laughs> if you were leaving the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, you'd still have to drive four and a half hours north to even more frozen tundra. -er so let's say you're Aaron Rodgers. You get home. It's after a game. You're going for a ride. You start driving north. You're driving for like what hour and a half. Trying to, you know, calm your mind, you know, woo your sorrows as you drive. Maybe it'll clear your head after two big losses in a row. You're still driving a while. You just want to slay some fresh pow to clear your mind. Four What's and a half that? hour drive. Damn. How about yep. Cooper Harbor? That looks like way out there. Cooper Harbor? It's like on the tip, that little tip that's in the middle of oh, nowhere. Yeah. Another, uh, another 20 minutes probably. That looks pretty cool. I wonder what that looks like. Yeah. Minnetonka Resort is up there. I'm going to go visit it right now on Google by dropping my little my little man out there. See what... Oh, really nice... Uh, it seems awesome woods, up there. Forest. I got to be honest. I want to know if it's like... Are the people different up there? Are they kind of separated and like, you know, like just a different world up there? Like, we don't like your kind up here, kind of? Or... That they're happier. It could be, but they're happier than anybody in New York City. But you're—they're completely like they're—they're they're really like surrounded by water. Yeah. I wonder if you could swim across the Canada right there. How bad do you want it? How bad if do you, you want it? If you swim across the Canada, do they stop you on a boat so you can't cross, like border crosser people? Does Canada even out. have border crossing people? They used to. Well, let's say you're a in Mounties Cooper in a, Harbor. In a kayak? Couple, yeah, that's right. You can't go there, eh? Let's say if you're at Cooper Harbor and you want to see a hockey game in Thunder Bay, how do you get there? You got to drive like four hours around to see that, or can you just take a boat in like 20 minutes? Like a wave runner in the winter. Oh, yeah, with the Snow mullet flowing. In the winter. With the mullet flowing? Yeah. You're doing a Kenny Powers on that. <laughs> Kenny Powers and all the way all the way there. Or seaplane. Seaplanes. That's the way to go. That's seaplane plane right pilot. There. Yep. So awesome that Michigan has skiing going on. And they speaking, must get a lot of lake defect stuff right there. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> So speaking of Michigan, I'm going to flip the order because it works better that way. Boom. TGR. We're all familiar with them. And they're, they make a few films. They make a few films. We've seen a couple of them. Last year, they put out a free film that we were huge fans of called In Pursuit of Soul, where they partnered with the folks from the Indie Pass to feature, I think it was maybe five or six different independent ski resorts. And it was received so well that they've decided to do a sequel hmm. in nice. pursuit of soul two, which features mountains in the Midwest, specifically Buck Hill, Tyrol basin, granite peak, Cabrafe peaks, Nordic mountain, little Switzerland, Lutzen mountains, in the Rock Snow Park. Hmm. 
Super cool. So this is going to be dropping the film, I believe, the day after this podcast comes out. Podcast should be out on the 24th. This comes out on the 25th. You can go to the show notes or just go to tetongravity.com and you should be able to watch it right there. Nice. Again, if, if you love skiing and you love independent ski resorts like we do, this has got everything the first one did with a lot of that kind of Midwest charm. Hmm. It looks, you see these little places and, you know, they always talk about it. That it doesn't matter how much vertical you have. It just matters that you're, you're on snow and you're, you're out there skiing or snowboarding. And that's, that's what they're kind of trying to push with this, this film just showing these passionate people doing what they love doing and do it in a place that, you know, a lot of times skiers will, will you overlook it, overlook. Exactly. Man, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So Very can't awesome. wait to check this out in full. In a couple days, TGR. Boom. So I was uh, skipping to the next one and just starting to look at stuff. So they came out with the resort guide, uh, and this is from Ski Mag, SkiMag.com. They came out with their top resort guide, and they split up into east and west, which is kind of nice. This way, you can kind of, you know, everybody has their their little playground uh, to judge them by. Um, and it makes sense because East, East is definitely different season than, than West. Um, and I, I flipped right away, of course, to the East to, just to see where the favorite haunts that we've been, <laughs> uh, ended up. Um, and I was very surprised. Killington was number three. You thought that I, was uh, too high or too low? I thought that was too high. I was kind of like, really? I thought it would be up there. I, I thought it'd be top five, but. When was the last time you were actually at Killington? I got to say three years ago. They're, uh, they're always they're, they've been, they've been tweaking some knobs and dials. They've been stepping things up. That's they've been good. Stepping things up a little bit. Yeah. It's good to know. Um, yes. Yeah, so there, Oh, this is the other one. It's switched over. Switch I don't. Back. I don't quite agree with some of their their app price spot. They're like, go to Bridgewater Corners. It's like, why would I go past everything and yeah, go there? Go up there. It's just like it's seven miles from the Skyship base lot. It's like, do you know what I've passed in those seven miles? Why are you <laughs> telling me to go that far? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Um. But yeah, and then they do the uh, the West Resorts, which is kind of cool. I like uh, seeing that. I mean, we've been to a bunch of these. Um, let's do the spoiler. Sun Valley, Idaho is number one. Number one. Yep. And I've heard so many good things about it. Still never been out there. Um, <laughs> damn. Banff, I was going to go there last year, but because Canada sucks, I didn't go. Uh, canceled my trip. Actually had it booked. And Trudeau, Mr. Brownface, you can go F yourself. Um, I know it's a family show, so I'll say F yourself. Mm. Everybody knows what I mean. If they don't, you know, I can <laughs> expand on it later. Uh, Whistler, number five. I love Whistler. Deer Valley, I'm just going to skip by because even though they were number two, I think I skied them like one day. Oh, no, I didn't ski Deer Valley. Or did I? I don't remember. I was hammered. Aspen, I've never skied. You ski Aspen? I have not skied Aspen. Aspen's on my list. I got to do Aspen. Deer Valley, uh, maybe. See, I like number six on this list. Number six has been on my bucket list for a while. I like oh. number six a lot. So number six, Brian, which is that? Whitefish in Montana. So I I've looked a few years in a row at like getting there and it is a pain in the ass to get there. Cause it's surrounded. It's like there's Indian reservations all around. Um, and I've actually talked to people and like the best way to go in is actually fly into a close city. I forgot which one they said, and you take the train in and they're like, that's actually the best way to go is just cause easiest and just nicer to get in that way. I'm like, you know, that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. 
I actually on this the West Coast list, the one I was a bit surprised how low it was was Jackson Hole at twenty one. Yeah, that's surprising, right? Yeah, I mean there are definitely other aspects. Got to hit the, the hole. The criteria, you know, I think part of it is you know cost and crowds and you know a few other things that are in there. Uh, and another one that I love on this list is number 13, Arapahoe Basin in Colorado. Yeah. And Telluride's at seven. So, you know, some of our, our favorite places are showing up, makes, making pretty good showings there. Um, What's uh, Palisades? I've never heard of that resort. Boom. I had to throw it Because uh, oh, oh. I hate the whole renaming. I'm just, you know. Don't, you can't dead name the resort. It's that it's gonna I just, be offended if you do. It's the resort which we do not name anymore. We do <laughs> not call. Uh, Val, yeah, Tommy I'm Mosley had Jackson. to throw out his whole wardrobe because of it. <laughs> so I hope you're happy. Can you imagine? You're like, damn it, I can't even wear this jacket. His whole wardrobe had to change because of this. <laughs> I'm actually surprised Park City was thirtieth. Yeah, so, I think part of that reason was because of the dumpster fire lines, the lift lines last year. Yeah, it's what gets it, right? It dropped it's the, from what I think it was like 15 or 16 down to 30. Yeah, that's uh I I'm surprised at that because you know, they did a lot to build up the amenities and all that stuff. Um there's almost too much going on there and it's too easy to get to, which is why it's been Yeah. You know, kind of a pain. You know what I'm surprised is Oh, okay, it's on there. Um, I was gonna say I like that it's it's hidden, you know. Uh, Snow Basin, I fucking love Snow Basin. Yeah. So we went last year. Everybody knows. Um, I like the whole Ogden scene. Um, a little more chill, a little more laid back. Yeah, you know, uh, I gotta say we went with the with Nadja and it was it was great. You know, the the Journalist Association that first year, and then after that, I was like, you know, I'm going back with my wife, and we did a nice little trip. Um, and I tell you what, we, it was, it was pretty cool. We had a really great time, uh, and just skied snow basin. I mean, we could have done powder. We could have done a, a bunch of other resorts, but I kind of like, you know, hitting one place and, and getting the feel for it and really doing that place. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty cool. And they're getting, uh, what is it? 2024, 25. They're going to be opening up, um, um, a club med there. So you're gonna powder be, or snow basin at snow basin wow so you're gonna be able to do the all-inclusive and i'm sure they're gonna have you know you'll do you could do a day trip whenever you want over to powder and powder is just awesome terrain so yeah they're both there in the top 20 yeah and i, I it's just a nice relaxed chill atmosphere not big resorty kind of feel like it's still it's a resort it's a big resort that has the feel of like a local mountain which is kind of cool yeah yeah, and uh, I'm gonna go back to the east for a uh, for a second. I like how Magic made number nine. They got they cracked the top ten. Magic, I, that's still on my bucket list. That was awesome to see. Brett this year Woods, I gotta interesting. This year I gotta do I gotta do New Hampshire. I gotta. I don't know. Canon. Yeah, everybody says Loon. I don't know. We uh, <laughs> you. You have trips to New Hampshire almost every month, don't you? Yeah, I was just there two weeks ago, and okay. I'm saying, you know, every time I'm there, I'm like, yeah, it's not snowy, but now I have time to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then when it's snowy, I'm like, it's too busy. So, gotta I'll make it there. happen. We can do it. Who yeah, can stop us? It. Now that I got my permanent role at my at my real world job and things are moving, I think I could swing it more so now. There you go. So that's what I like to hear. Just gotta stay positive every every winter. Stay positive until the end of the winter, and then you could bag on the shitty winter they had. But you know what? Until it until it ends, it's the most amazing winter you've ever had. That's right. That's how you gotta, that's how you gotta attack it and approach it and just live it, right? Yep. Attack, attack, Bretton attack. Woods. Stay positive. Bretton Woods looks pretty sweet. Didn't they do a big expansion last year? Uh, Bretton Woods is interesting. That's Michaela Schiff from country, isn't it? No. Where'd she start at? She's in Colorado. I mean, she went to Burke Academy. That's what it was, Burke Academy. Yeah. 
So these lists are always very contested. People are like, I can't believe blah, 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 was blah, blah, blah. It's, I get it. They have their criteria. And also they have. Well, you like the sponsors. criteria, right? Well, I mean, I like the criteria, but I also know that a lot of these resorts pay for advertising in ski magazine <laughs> so there you go perhaps that may sway some of the results because certain things are are debatable in these results if uh you know if we're being honest but it is fun to see and it's fun to get kind of fired up and annoyed about certain things but they do a I like getting good annoyed job. about certain things because i also then i get annoyed and then i want to prove my annoyance wrong yeah Like, I want to prove myself wrong, which is good. It's healthy. Yeah. Makes you want to go to the place and be like, why is this place so great? And you're like, oh, this wasn't that great. But hey, they got me over here. So I guess they win. So like Banff in Canada pissed me off so much last year because we're going to do a trip to Calgary. We had everything planned and everything. Fell to shit because of vaccine and restrictions and whatever with the nuttiness that Canada was doing. Uh, We're back talking about it. It's back in conversation again. Hmm. Go to Calgary, get a place, get a lot, get a pet. Now we're looking at uh, what, what's the other place right outside it, even closer to the skiing. It's um, is it Invermere or what's the, the other place? I don't know. It's uh, right outside of Calgary. Let's see. And my wife's looking at places there like, hey, we got to look at this place too. I'm like, yeah, kind of, I'm thinking still Calgary. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I, Calgary's got it's the big city stuff. It's got the stampede. I don't know. Nice. If you're uh, renting your place out, stampede is like a three week gold mine. Oh, that's saying. like the big cowboy festival they have, right? Yeah, and she's been. She's like, we got it, and we were gonna try to go there. We were actually there two years ago. Shit, we went last year. No, we were there last year when Stampede would have gone on um, and they canceled Stampede and we're like, I was like, oh, that would have been cool to be there. Yeah, right. Supposedly it's a real scene. You know, as the Northerners say, it's a real scene. It's a real scene. Oh, Cranmore. That's where she was looking. Cranmore. Yeah, so if you go outside, of, like just west of Calgary, on the road, like right near Banff, it's Cranmore. And it's cool, chill little, you know, mountain place and probably, I don't know, like an hour outside of Calgary, maybe. I don't even know. Love it. I'm just talking on my ass. Not far from, it's like 10 miles from Banff. Yeah. So you're in the mountains there. It's like a nice, you know, cool, chill little town, little lakes going on. and That's the way to do it. At the Nordic Center there. Yeah, it looks pretty chill, but I'm kind of like, I don't know. You got to got to see it to believe it, right? Yeah, very true. So. Just like a lot of these places on this list, you got to see them to believe them. Yeah. And you know, so, you might have been at a place and you had an amazing experience. That's where I got to speak up because the people that make these lists don't necessarily have that experience. So you, you want to share. That's why we have this podcast. We share our experiences, good and share, bad. Share the love. You know? Places yep. that we think suck or that we talk badly about. I'm sure other people are like, you guys are idiots. I had the best time there. Magical, whatever. YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> Everyone's got their own experience. Everyone's got different conditions and moods, and, and that's okay. We're yeah. just here to, to share any sort of knowledge that we can to hopefully make your time a better time. So We're the idiots that went to Ishko. <laughs> We sure were. We had a great time. We were the first American group to stay in that hotel. That's right. Yeah. And we had a great time. And now Never. people are like that was COVID. Yeah, we might have been in the in the center of COVID, but it was still magical. It's never been the same since, has it? Never. Nope. We ruined it for people. Yeah. Well, that wraps up the ski news. And now on to the main topic. So we've teased it, we've talked about it. Snowbound Expo. It is happening November 18th to 20th. Boston, Massachusetts. Heinz Convention Center. Heinz Convention Center, which is right in the Back Bay area. It's right near Fenway Park. It's it's in a very 
it's like cool group. Cool it's like group, a quarter cool mile area. from Fenway, right? It's like really close. Yeah, it's in a great area. There's, you know, the um the big is it the what's the big thing it's connected to there? Is it it's like the Prudential something? It's like a big convention. There. Copley Place. That's what it is. Copley Place is there. Yeah. It's like shopping and restaurants. There's a lot going on there. It's a baller ass place. Like I stayed there many, many, many years ago, and I stayed at the Lennox at the time, which is right there, like right near that. Yeah, I stayed at that same hotel. It's got the Lind Chocolate Place down there in the Irish pub. Yeah, yeah. It's like you walk around, and there's that one street where it's just restaurant after restaurant and cool places, and it's just. I think it's Boylston. Boylston, yeah. yeah. It's pretty sweet. I got to say, for somebody that grew up in New York that hated Boston sport teams and kind of still does, um, they got a great town. <laughs> yeah, that area is like really, you know, it's it's pretty tourist friendly. There's a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. But again, the Snowbound Festival is the reason why we are super excited. And to give you some info, it used to be the Boston ski and snowboard expo and the man who created it bernie i think it's pronounced weixel feel the burn b he, he sold his his company b-e-w-i productions to the snow sports industry of america in the f- the fall or winter of 2019 how much was did like, he sell it for i don't know but it was the absolute most amazing time to sell an in-person business. That's for oh, sure. Oh, hold on a second. Real estate, Casey. BEWI sell the real estate port. They had a real estate portfolio. They had a portfolio. It says two hundred twenty million. Get out of here! Really? <laughs> it says God, real damn. estate. Maybe it's a different place. I don't know. Whoa. Good for him. Yeah, I don't know if that's the right one. That's like saying, yeah, I have a, a a company. Its name is Amazon, and I sold it. And people are like, the Amazon? No, it's <laughs> it's another Amazon. Let's put yeah. it that way. It's actually an Amazon exploration company. We go out to the Amazon <laughs> and drive around in trucks. Yeah. That kind of thing. Exactly. So, yes, he sold it in 2019. The original plan was to have it in 2020. Didn't happen. 2021, they were trying to make it happen. There was rumors. It was... Our friend Matt wrote an article in March of 2021, Matt Pepin, about it, talking about what's going on there. And uh, it did not happen again. And in 2022, finally, it is going to happen. Yes. Finally, so com- we're back. <clears throat> so, yeah. So on the website, they talk about, you know, how it's different and <clears throat> the snowboard or the Snowbound Expo is the relaunch of the well-known Boston Ski and Snowboard Expo, bringing together the ski and snowboard community to meet up and plan for their next adventure in the mountains. The show will bring together brands showcasing the latest gear, equipment, apparel, technology, and is the place to pick up ski passes for the next season. Snowbound Expo hosts an amazing lineup of inspirational speakers who will share their skills and experiences to get visitors stoked for the next season. Accessible to all, they are going to have some kind of retail, it says. But I think one of the big things in the old show is they had a, um, they partnered with one of the large ski, you know, ski snowboard apparel shops in New England, and they had a big, piece like a massive of, section for it. Yeah, yeah, they had all kinds of like crazy security to get in and out, mm-hmm. where you could go and buy, you know, some discounted gear. They're going to have some retail though. Uh, but the big focus is the different stages that they're going to have. Mm-hmm. And that's what's the, that's what makes it exciting. That's what, you know, we're kind of stoked about is that they're going to have a couple different stages. They're going to have the inspiration stage and then they're going to have the snow skills cabin stage. And the inspiration stage is going to be awesome because it's going to have Bodie Miller and you're going to have all the big know, names going to be there. Yeah, Bodie, Danny Egan, Danny Egan yeah, Danny Ray's Acosta. They're they're all gonna be there. Chris Davenport, but the Snow Skills Cabin is where mm. the party is gonna be. That's, That's the party sure. time, right there. Yeah, we're gonna be hosting that stage. That's Are we allowed to be. give out alcohol? We didn't ask them. Uh, we'll find out. <laughs> we're gonna find out. So we have. 
we're the host there for the whole weekend. So we're going to be introducing a bunch of different stuff. They're going to have introduction to Nordic skiing. Dan Egan will also be there. He'll be everywhere, but he'll be there talking about the mentality of big mountain skiing, which is hilarious because we're going to be talking about like Blue Mountain and Wachusett and, you know, <laughs> the places that he grew up skiing and uh, around the Boston area. How to stay safe if you're caught in an avalanche with Ortovox. We got our and- Ortovox beacons, don't we? We got to bring them. Um, ours are actually a different company that is not one of the sponsors of the podcast, but maybe they'll can hook us Damn up. Damn it, it's not Artivox. Sure. That's right. We'll we see. almost bought the Artivox ones. We bought the other ones that were recalled that they're good now. Yes. <laughs> Open Snow is going to be there talking about snow forecasting, how to find a job in the ski industry. You just make your own job like we did. We're going to yeah. have some uh, PSIA folks. We're going to have Wine Moms, Nicole Feliciano, we're gonna have the pug ski folks, Phil and Trisha. Like, there's a lot of fun, cool people that are gonna be on our stage. Dave and... Downing. What's that? Dave Downing. Did From I Burton. miss Dave? I miss Dave. You miss Dave. Upcoming snowboard gear to get excited about. Like, there's gonna be a lot of cool people here. I'm just jonesing for this experience. Like, I'm so excited. The fact that we got asked to host this stage is still kind of crazy. Yeah, I don't know who we we paid off in another lifetime, but like it's paying off now, I guess. Oh, and also our uh, our new friend Stuart Winchester from Storm Skiing, he's gonna be doing a live podcast there. Yeah, it's so gonna be pretty sweet. We're, we're probably gonna crash it and make some comments and add our two cents. Which oh, we're gonna be there. They may have to break out the tasers and shut us up, but <laughs> <laughs> like shut those guys up. Yeah, but it's gonna be a great time. I don't JP. even know. Like, J Peak is going to be there with um, with Stuart. And I guess the one thing we just there's so much uncertainty about this because, you know, we did the the Boston ski and snowboard a couple of years. So, you, you know, after the first year, you kind of have a you understand the lay of the land. You know what to expect, you know where to go, what to do. This is going to be new for everybody. So, yeah, I guess our big goal in all of this is one to kind of keep things running smoothly and two to just get people fired up. Get them excited. Yeah, you know, connect with uh, people, right? Just get people back to a different state of mind. You know, yeah. to get them to kind of almost put the last two years, like just shove it in a dumpster, just put it down the uh, garbage disposal, and put it in the COVID box and put it in the closet, right? No, set it on fire. Don't even put it in a box. Just get rid of it. <laughs> set it on fire. We are moving into the future. You know, how are we going to do this? How are we going to just start? thinking about the things that we enjoy, the things we love, and how do we maximize our time doing them? Yeah, I tell you what. Um, I got to say, Brian, I was I was going through a little bit of depression every every season with COVID and shutdowns, and you can't go here, and you have to have this to go there. And it was just kind of pissing me off. Um, and I tell you what, before, before Snowbound came along and we got the offer to do this, I was pretty down. You know, I did have my trip planned for – Val Torrens, which is still going, it's actually going good. We've got another uh, bunch of friends that are going with us. Um, but I tell you what, I was still kind of like a little bit down and now Snowbound came around and I tell you what, it's, it's coming up, it's coming up all millhouse now. Yeah. It's sort of like reinvigorated us too with the podcast, getting us like fired up again. And cause sometimes you feel like you're doing it and you're like, why are we doing this? You know, we're yeah. not getting rich off of this. And then you just get that one email or that one comment or an offer like this to go and host this. And you're like, oh, so people are listening and people are yeah. excited. And this is resonating. We kept, doing with it. we kept it real. We kept forging ahead. But, you know, to realize that you're not on an island and, and, and other people are there, like, you know, kind of in the space appreciating what you're doing. Like, it's it's reinvigorating. It's great. You just want like a little bit of external validation sometimes. Yeah. You know, especially with like, the podcast, not, you're kind of like, is anybody listening? You know, we, yeah, we do have like, contact, but we're not like begging for compliments or like, you know, like, why doesn't anybody like us? But you just want like but once in are. a while, <laughs> it's just like once in a while, but like you guys are doing great. Like we love your vibe. Like, Hey, here's a hundred bucks a month or Hey, come host this or, you know, or hey, just just write us an email and say 
go f yourself that that works too at least, at least you're <laughs> listening at yeah. least i know you listened to, and you actually took the time to write a letter if thank you, you very took much. the time to write that email <laughs> you're still gonna keep listening you could have just ignored us and gone back to your tv or your your whatever eating ice cream whatever you do but you actually took the time out to write a letter to us that's right <laughs> we're not perfect we don't know it all that's for sure but you know what we we know what we love and we love skiing and we love all the people we've met doing this i mean we've met some incredible people we're going to meet more incredible people at this show hopefully we'll meet you hopefully you know person listening right now make sure you're there i mean we're going to be really easy to find we're going to be the handsome bastards on the stage who cannot be shut up that we might have, we might even have orange jumpsuits for part you of the just, show yeah you i think that know. could be like a sunday thing sunday thing orange jumpsuits and then I'll switch into my jet gear, maybe, and get the shit kicked out of me. We'll see. Bloody Marys and orange jumpsuits. That's what Sundays are for. Orange jumpsuits. <laughs> that's right. Leisure suits. The leisure suits might be breaking out. Leisure suits, yeah. Yeah. So we're psyched. Uh, again, if you want more information, check them out, snowboundexpo.com, or go to our website, skibumpodcast.com. We're supposed to have some 50% off coupon codes. I haven't gotten them yet. They'll be, They'll be coming. They'll be coming. Reach out. We'll reach out to our contacts, get us uh get you guys some love. We're gonna have our people talk to their people, we'll make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. And also too, you know what? If you're in that area, if you're uh in Boston and you say, guys, don't go to these played out corny restaurants, bars, make sure you go here, make sure you go here. We are all ears. Yeah. I One think of the things I'm trying to possibly the blizzard bash or whatever they have on Thursday by boston.com is running that. So we're going to see about going there at night. We'll see. We'll be around town. I mean, we may post out, watch our Instagram. We might post out, Hey, we're buying beers at this bar. You never know. I'm talking food though. Like I know like Atlantic fish is like a kind of famous, good place. Um, there's all like the, there's all like the fancy like places there, Capitol Grill, Delmonica, Delmonica Buffers goes. No, Trillium's that's by the old show. I know. I still like it. Oh, it's awesome. And I still remember the first time we tried going to the old Trillium and went to the wrong place. And yeah, of course. I mean, that I remember it was like pouring rain at dumpster. Pouring fire. rain they, and they just drop us off. See ya. Oh. Uber guys like, see ya, it's raining. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. That was bad. Yeah. That was our first time we were there. It was a bad experience. Every time after that, it's been awesome. So if you have tips, ideas, recommendations for that area, hey, we're all ears. Yeah. If you want to invite us into your basement apartment, we're probably going to say no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got this great. So, uh, listen, I just watched got a the, band. Look, no, I just watched the Dahmer miniseries. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm like heightened alert. Like, yeah, heightened alert is the, right. The antennas are like way up. Like I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> Come I'm, on, let's uh, get a drink. Well, why don't you have a drink here? I just poured your drink. Just come and watch one more movie. What yeah, do you say? No. That's a creepy line he had. That might that might not happen. Yeah. But if we're in a public place and we feel safe. <laughs> if it's a safe place. It's a safe space, man. <laughs> hey, we look no. out for each other. We look out for you too. You if know, if you want to come, if you want to buy us drinks out of something that's been sealed and not tampered with, we'd be happy to have yeah. them. <laughs> Bottled beers are accepted, not mixed drinks, mixed by your own hand. <laughs> Potentially. I don't know. After the dollar thing. Could you we imagine have a, a whole check? Oh, dude. I no, I can't imagine. That's why it's well, freaking me out, like, man. Could you imagine being like a girl, like 21-year-old girl, like going out for like to like get drinks with your friends or whatever, and like creepy guys are just like putting shit in there and like ugh. Dude, I carry my my taser now when I go walk the dog. I'm I'm one step away from carrying my concealed weapon. I'm Same. telling you, low powered grenades. That's Same. the key. Low power grenades. Like not like more than bang snaps, but not quite grenades. Like in that middle area. Yeah, you know the Low stun gun grenades. that that sends a message. That and the uh, riot mace that I have too. That that yeah. actually works pretty good. That's good for crowds. Riot mace. <laughs> it really is riot mace. It's made. It's not made for one person. It's made to share. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like a fun jackass stunt to start yeah. spraying yourselves with it. It's kind of like human bear spray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see that video of that dude with the bear on that hike? No. The dude like fought off a bear. Like he was climbing a uh, mountain climbing. Damn. And this bear came at him. Oh, dude. Was it in yeah. Russia? Tell me it was in Russia. No, it was in, uh, in the US. <laughs> was it was it Putin in the Ukraine trying to prove that he still got it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was 
it was nuts. It was so crazy. It's definitely worth checking out. Awesome. But anyway, yes, check us out. Um, we can't wait to, to go up there. Hopefully you'll come by, see us. Got to get your tickets. Get them now. Get, get, them, get yeah. them early while, while they last. I don't know how long they're going to have them. They're probably going to have them for a little while, but I don't know if they're going to cap them or I don't know. There's a lot of unanswered questions still. I got to imagine. I mean, that convention center is pretty big, but I don't know. They got to have a maximum capacity. And I got to say they had a, a really good turnout uh, from what they were telling us. So who knows? I mean, they could, they could be up to a lot of tickets by now. Yeah. So get them now. Indeed. So it's going to be awesome. We're excited. Hope to see you there. Thank you for listening. We do appreciate it. Check us out. Skibonpodcast.com. You're on all your favorite social media apps, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, untapped YouTube. Send us an email, skibonpodcast at gmail.com. Big thank you to the Chuck Bucket. Check them out at thechuckbucket.com. Thank you, Chuck Bucket. Thank you. And thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Stay high, stay fluid. See you.